it's not like I'm a foe of the Enlightenment. I think you Enlightenment types, and I put Pinker in the same camp, radically overestimate the degree to that was, that was a causa sui. It's like everyone was barbaric and superstitious until 1750, and some miracle occurred, and now we're all in, we all became enlightened. Like there was a well, lengthy no, developmental no. Cle history clearly, of that. Clearly, we all haven't. I mean, we, this is hence, hence our con complaining about the problem. I mean, most of the world... Most of the world hasn't had the Enlightenment yet True. on some level. Look, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no foe to the Enlightenment, but I think that it had a lengthy developmental history that is radically underplayed by the people who, who ground it purely in rationality. It's, it's clearly still developing. My point is we, we should be able to agree that having a worldview guided by a continuous, honest engagement with reality insofar as we can apprehend it is better than having a worldview solidified or anchored to unchanging ideas that were born of people who had none of our present tools, none of our present insights into anything. Well, it depends on, it depends on the principles. It depends on the principles. Like I would say, there, there are situations where that clearly applies, but I think there are broad principles, and again, we should probably stop with this, I think. Yep, we're um, about there. Because I'm, 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 I'm starting to get tired. I'm sure everyone else in here is starting to get tired. Um, well, I'm starting to get tired anyways. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the, the, there, are, there are principles, there are higher order principles of the sort that I described that you also appear to rely on in the moral landscape, the idea of these profound moral intuitions. Yep. And so that's what I'm after is what, are these profound moral intuitions and what is their source? And like, I'm also perfectly willing to make the claim and have in fact in, in detail that these moral intuitions, see that this is a place where we differ a little bit. It's like, and, and maybe we can go here tomorrow night. See, it seems to me that, that you, for you, for you in your argument is the facts are laying out there and you can extract out value from them. And, and we already described why you want to do that because you want to at least not move into the nihilistic direction and you want to ground them in some sort of reality, it's like fair enough. But the thing is, is that the facts as they are have been around for a very, 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 very long time, right? Let's say three and a half billion years, the entire expanse of life. And it's the operation of those facts on life that has produced the a priori um, implicit interpretive structures that guide our interaction with the facts. And those a priori implicit structures that have emerged out of this evolutionary course have a structure that mediates between us and the facts that cannot be derived from the facts at hand. And so, so then the question is, what is that structure? And, and it's in both of our interests to get that right, yeah. because you use that as the source of moral intuition. It's like, right, agreed, that's the source of moral intuition.